In this video, we will see how to perform linear regression analysis in Excel. And what we have are the SAT results by district. We have the number of test takers, that's going to be our independent variable, our X, and our composite score, which is the sum of our reading, math, and writing. That's going to be our dependent variable, the Y. So two different ways we can approach this. One way is we can select our test takers, hold down your control button, and also select your composite score. We want the insert tab, and then we want to select our scatter plot tool. And we want the first option. Using the plus sign, we can select our axis titles, and we can also select our trend line, also known as our best fit line. We can use linear, exponential, you have some other options as well. So you can type at the very bottom so that you can indicate what this axis represents. And you can click on the vertical axis as well. There's also a quick layout at the left that gives you different ways you can also see this. And I want to select layout number nine. And what you should see is a f of x. What that is going to do is to give you the equation of that best fit line. So y is equal to 0.0324x plus 1347.2 our r squared value is 0 0.089. r squared is our coefficient of determination. And that tells us the percentage of variability that is explained by this model, by this equation. It tells you how well this model works. So we normally change this value to a percentage. So our interpretation of the coefficient of determination would be 8.93% of the variability in the y, the composite score, is explained by this model. R squared can be between 0 and 1, or if you're working in percentages, 0% to 100%. So at 8.93%, this model does not work very well. So that's one option. Another option we would use, we need to deselect our graph, is under our data tab. And all the way to the right, what you should see is an analysis group. If you don't have this group available, you need to turn that add-in on by going to File, Options, Add-ins, and at the very bottom down with Manage, you should press Go. And you want to make sure to select your Analysis Tool Pack. You do not need to select the second one and press OK. And now when you are under the data tab and the analysis group, you should see data analysis. So when we select this, there are lots of statistical tools available to you. And we want regression. And we press OK. Input our Y range. We highlighted all the data values for our dependent variable. Our X range, we highlighted all the values from our dependent variable. We made sure to select labels. Since this dotted line is also including composite score, that means it's also including the title. So we want to definitely make sure to select that. I have my residual selected, residual pots, and line fit pots, as well as our normal probability plot. And my information is going to go to a new worksheet. And we can press OK. So in between each of your columns, if you double click on the vertical bar, it will expand that column out to maximize it so that you can see all of the information that is listed in that column. And over to the right, you have the plots that we selected. And of course, you can change the size on them. You can edit them by using the plus sign. So we have our R squared value, and this is the same value that we saw that is provided when we perform the scatter plot. We have 
our significance value if you're doing hypothesis testing on this model. We have our y-intercept and we have our slope. And these are the same coefficients that are listed, once again, from our best fit line provided by our scatter plot. So from our algebra, we have our slope is the coefficient of x and the value that doesn't have a variable is our y-intercept. We have our p-values for each of those coefficients. We also have our confidence interval for each of those coefficients. At the bottom, we have our residual outputs. So looking at the first observation, we have our predicted composite score. So the way that is determined, we are using our best fit line and our x represents test takers and we are on the first observation. So our x value is 95, we substitute that into our equation and that gives us our predicted score. Our residuals represent our observed values minus our predicted. So your observed values is the actual value you actually have in your data set minus your predicted value, what we should have gotten once we substituted in the x. So that gives us our residual.